Well, I normally start on time, but uh, I guess uh, today is an odd one. I, uh, I have had COVID. I tested uh, negative today. So last week, I think I forgot to tell. I should have told you just so you could have worn your mask. Um, but I just, I was in uh, total denial. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to start. Uh, let's start off with a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yep. Here, okay. okay. And uh, let's see if we got it. Okay. Uh, Vanessa is entering. We'll let her enter. And uh, so uh, last week, we uh, talked about, see my little uh, cheat sheet here? See the stars there? Okay. Uh, eyeglasses, we want to work on that. And I sent you um, a template you could use that I'll be painting from. It's this lady right here. And uh, I uh, blew the picture up so that I could uh, talk a little bit of detail about some of the things I was looking at. And I also would like to show a video of another artist uh, talking about hands, because uh, we were going to talk a little bit about hands too, or I, well, I threw that in, um, only because it's something I've, uh, hi, Vanetta. I've been, How you uh, doing? Uh, doing quite well. <laughs> And then uh, we're going to uh, look at each, uh, those of you who took the challenge to do, a, do or start a self-portrait. And uh, I think, um, let's see, where is Patty on yet? I don't see her. Patty, where are you? Let's see. Could, uh, let's see. Could Helen, you send her a note. Um, I, I fixed the email for her and we exchanged emails this week. I think we got that corrected. Hopefully she's not having any problems getting in today. I don't see, no, she's not, 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 not there. Okay. All right. Let's hear from you all. Let's start down the list. Uh, just tell us what you've been working on and if you've got a portrait, uh, self-portrait or anything you've been working on. Who would like to start today? I mean, uh, better question. Oh, there we go. Oh, man, okay. that's awesome. Everybody wants to start. Look at the, all right. You have the floor. Me? Yes. OK. I did a self-portrait. I learned a lot of things that I don't know how to do. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's there's, really. Uh, there's the picture. That's really nice. Wow. Yeah. Well. To I my like advantage, I don't know how to do wrinkles, so. Okay. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let me make a little note of some things we may want to note for today. And then I followed your recipe for the gray, but it didn't I, really work out. I like it. Well, what don't you like about that? It should be a little grayer. Oh, okay. Well, I think. Then, uh, yeah. But, and that, if you want a little gray, add a little more of the ultramarine, probably. Just yeah. kind of play with it before you put it on. Uh, that's quite a credible job. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Very good. All right. Nicely Thank done. You. And you learn something and learn, well, the biggest thing is learn what you want to work, need to work on. Yeah, that's the main <laughs> thing I learned. Okay. Who's next? Okay, Ryan, I'll do it. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's actually pretty cool. Let me tell you, hold that up. I'll tell you some things that's cool about that. The one that most importantly um, is you're staying light. And uh, I really like the, uh, sh the shading you're using. It looks very credible. Uh, mouth is credible. So this is definitely a, a big step in the right direction for you. Thank All you. Right. I've got to stay away from those dark colors, though. Wait. I know. You like them. Yeah. You really like them. Maybe you ought to use charcoal. 
I'm kidding. Okay, who's next? We got time for you. Okay, Veneta. Okay. So this was the image of an uh, older picture I had of myself. Yeah, that looks a lot like you. <laughs> it is. And then I tried several different versions of it. As my husband watched and said, that's not it, not it, not it. Even though he doesn't, <laughs> even though he doesn't do any art, but he was critiquing like he was doing it. So anyhow. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, this is one of them that I did. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, this one, I tried to get the features in a little better. I hey, just uh, pull it back this. just a little bit away from the screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep going. And then this was the first one I did. And he was saying I didn't have the shapes right. So I was working on the joint, but he liked that I got the earrings in. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of really good things you did here. Number one, skin tones. Um, not sure what colors you use. They're very uh, nice. You didn't wash them out or um, uh, turn them into browns and you still pulled out the color in your face. Mm. Um, that's, uh, that's big. And then uh, the other is, I think the um, uh, general uh, usage and how you applied the hair was nice. So I think there's a lot. Okay, here, let me let me admit. Uh, there we go. Oh, there's Patty. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Patty. Sorry for anything that may have been caused by you know who. I apologize. No problem. So yeah, Veneta, that was great. Okay, thank you. Thank and thank you. Uh, there's a few things I'm, I would uh, like to say to you. Uh, and let me just make a note of that before I forget. Okay. It'll be in some of the stuff we talked about today. I had trouble with the wrinkles also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I made a note. Anybody else want to show their self-portrait? I was able to do mine. Babysitting was canceled. Oh, I, I wasn't thinking you. Oh, I got the wrong one there. Here we go. I just, I just now, when class started, realized that I hadn't put an ear in. Well, there, <laughs> there's the problem. I think everything is about that earring. Okay, so uh, I really like it. Let's see. You know, values are dead on the money. Um. <laughs> The oh, there's just a couple of shapes that you missed that are important. Um, and those are the one shape on the nose. The, yeah, I uh, tried on that and I just could yeah, not get it. That one right there. Um, uh, that would be the only criticism. Um, well, constructive criticism <laughs> uh, I, would, I would work on. Uh, the hair and the colors. What color do uh, Pigmas is using the hair? Well, I, you know, I have a huge set of um, watercolor pencils. And so I used watercolor pencils because I wanted to try them. Good. And, and I use sepia and white. Right. Well, that, uh, that worked. Hold on a second. I got a call. <clears throat> All right. I had to, uh, one of the things forgetting to do is to uh, squelch by the phone. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, want, I want to hear the rest of that, Kelly. Well, and, um, you know, I, I feel like it's a helmet on my head. Oh, I don't. Okay, no, I'll back that up just a little bit away from me. Okay. Um, I don't think so. Um, now, I, that's from a, a photograph, right? Not right, right. Not from the mirror. Earlier photograph. It's actually a, just a year old. Wow. I know. Look how much I've aged. Yeah, I've had a you, rough year. You definitely, <laughs> you definitely look a year younger there. Oh, I, okay, nicely done. Now, I think, what did you learn in the process? 
Well, I, I learned that I have to pay more attention to the reference. I did not have the reference in front of me. Yeah. So that, yeah, that I was think my that's primary. The, that would probably be the biggie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't find the reference yesterday, and I didn't take the time to look that's for it. That's all right. Nice. Uh, however, nicely painted. Very okay. nice. It's a very nice painting. Anyone else do a, a self-portrait? Uh-oh. She's ready. Okay, all right. Here we go, Patty. I liked oh. it so much. I used it as my scrap. <laughs> yeah, pull it away just a hair from the camera. My husband liked the other part. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all right. A couple of really good things. Uh, one is the eyes are very well done. Thank you. Yeah. Now, the drawing is not as good. Um, the eyes are much closer together than that. So what, uh, and I, I, I'll, I'm gonna talk about that here in a minute. It's a common thing. I like where you started your background. Um, <laughs> I know you're being playful, but um, overlapping the values and, and doing the various uh, glazing and, and layers uh, is really a nice technique. It creates, uh, now it can be distracting, but uh, it can be part of the overall composition, which I like. Uh, if I were you, I'd finish this, and this would not consider, I would consider it to be like a formal portrait. I would call this a really an expressive painting. And, Looks like uh, a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, that's, that is, you're dead on. It gives me that feeling of a, a dream. And, that's so uh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, uh, honestly, really. Totally I, I can't tell you enough, uh, enough how well the eyes were done. Uh, Thank you. The, the mouth needs a little work if it were a realistic um, portrait. Uh, but keep in mind, this would be an excellent painting um, if you had the mouth uh, just a little in, equivalent in um, technique as your eyes. And then with that background, this would be a lovely painting as a true expression of type painting, not a portrait. Um, I encourage you to keep that up. Need to work on, you just need to work on the mount. So, yeah, so this is a, another great example of, we don't always have to paint a portrait traditionally. We can paint it expressive and mess up you know, the proportions and, and uh, not get everything right. But the consistency is important. If you're gonna paint the eyes so realistic, uh, you have to do the mouth also. Uh, the nose is actually pretty good. It's just the mouth. And uh, okay. set that aside, I would finish it. And uh, I would try to soften some of the edges on the shapes in the background or add okay. some more shapes that are softer on edges. And okay. I think you'll find that if you do that, that will form, that will push the uh, face to pop. But uh, uh, Patty, I like it. I mean that. Well, thank you. I love, I, it. Yeah. I love it, Patty. Yeah. Thank you. My, I told my husband, I said, I'm not showing them those. Yes, you are. Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> So, yeah. Hey, Patty, I also see a small little figure just below your left cheek. He's bent over. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see. This? This? Just below yeah. your left cheek. Uh -huh. my... Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's standing yeah. and kind of bent over. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure that's what you meant. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, hey. anybody, we missing anybody? Alice, did you do a self-portrait? Oh, I had company staying in my room that I paint in. Well, you know, don't they understand your priorities? <laughs> Just kick them out. All right. Okay. Here's what we're going to do today. And your input is highly is suggested. There is a, a video on YouTube. Uh, I like to show a little bit later um, if we have time. And I really like it. It's on hands. And uh, that way you'll see it, not one I created, so give them full credit. But I really appreciate it. Uh, it's on painting uh, hands with 
uh, with watercolors. Um, I'll show you a couple of things I've been working on. Let me uh, change the camera. There we go. Um, last week I told you I was uh, working on a series on, uh, let me turn my, there we go. I was working on a series of veterans and this gentleman, I think I mentioned to him last week, it may have even showed you the progress. I was a little sick last week, so I don't remember a whole lot, but, but that's okay. Uh, there are those who will probably say, you're really at your best when you're sick, but that's another topic. So uh, here he is. And uh, I do wanna show you, um, any first off, any questions or comments? That's great. Okay, so as in <laughs> everything I do, um, you know, my practice painting uh, I did first, and it was, you know, was, you know let's see if I can find it. Um, there's a couple of things I really worked on this time. Number one is to not go dark. This is this little spot right here is already probably for me a little dark. So so here's what I was trying to do. I was going to try to take the whole painting together as far as the dark values. Um, instead of getting something really dark over here, then it forces me to go over here, do, do that, and then forces me to go over here and fix that. I try to stay at one level of values. And uh, then if I don't like it, I'll come back. What I learned is I like the values there. So um, this is a big aha for me. Uh, the other thing is, um, here it is. This, some might ask, how do you get, there's a suggestion of some hair here, hair along here, see how it's dirty? And the way it, the way I do that is I mix just a little bit of the blue and the burnt sienna, just a little bit in with the paint here. You can see it's a little bit dirty, but it's enough to suggest there's probably some hair or something causing it to be darker. And the same thing I did up here on the hair here. Mm -hmm. um, I still went light. I might come back darker, but I think I'll leave it. Um, there's just a, a hint. Uh, see the hint on the hair on the top? Okay. It's just dirty with the ultramarine. I mixed that in with the uh, uh, paint, the uh, colors. And then look under the above the lip. So I didn't put any detail in. So instead of getting out maybe a small brush and putting in uh, marks, I left that because that, that wasn't, uh, I didn't go to that detail and I didn't want to. If not, I'd have to come back and do, put in the uh, ash, uh, hair lashes and all that stuff. And maybe even a couple of nose hairs, you know? So, <laughs> Any questions on that or input? So oh, could you do that for shadows then? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a really a, a great point. So as you're mixing one of the um, glazes or layers, what you could do is put a slight amount of the blue or burnt sienna or whichever color you're using It'd be the opposite of the yellowish, uh, reddish color. Uh, you put violet, but just put a touch. Just put a touch in. It won't take much. But try it when you experiment, putting a little of that in there uh, instead of applying burnt sienna and ultramarine directly as a coat or a glaze. Okay, good question. Ron, do you start off with an undercolor um, with the whole thing or um, wet on wet type of thing? Or how do you start it off? How did you start? Um, yeah, that's a good question. That's a topic for today. I'm glad you brought it up. Mm -hmm. 
Just a second. I need to cough here a second. <laughs> Okay, and of course, I've got to get my coffee. <laughs> so uh, that's a very good question. Um, in this case, I did it cellular, made it one area at a time, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably 50% of the way I do it. If I am very concerned with the details uh, and trying to make it realistic, I will do it cellularly. Uh, I did the eye first, then went to the other eye, in these areas. Now, here's the thing, the caution you have to watch for is when you stop here, you got to pick up again. So I stopped at a uh, crease or a, a wrinkle. Mm. And that way I could pick it up again without having to worry. Matter of fact, it works good because when I overlap, when I put this layer down, then I added this layer, it overlapped here and caused that line right there. See it? Yes. Because yes. that line has two layers on it. Hmm. It's a great technique, I think, for uh, doing uh, uh, wrinkles uh, is one wrinkle at a time. <laughs> and if you got a lot of wrinkles you're gonna well anyway we won't go there it's a good question anybody else mm -hmm. good okay um now that brings us uh to today i do want to just maybe pull up a couple of uh, slides for you uh, just a second don't go anywhere <laughs> What I like about this system, I have your, I control what you see. Hey, Ron, yeah. on that on that wrinkle technique, did you just learn that? Or is that something that you've always learned? Uh No, I've used that before. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, um, it reemphasized how much I like that approach. And I, I will show you that here a little later. It's on my uh, little list here, but um, that doesn't mean I'll, well, I, I better do something or I won't do it. Here we go. There, there. there. Okay, uh, let's see now, let's see if I can do this. No, I can't do this. Uh, hold on just a second. Don't be so impatient, come on. Uh, There it is. Okay, there we go. Let's see if that works. Let me. Uh, okay, everybody. Could you mute? I'll mute you. Um, that way, I don't have to make this change. There we go. All right, there we go. Uh, so, I sent this uh, to you uh, Monday. Days are kind of going fast. And um, uh, there she is. Uh, this, uh, I do not know her. I, uh, I paid for the rights to use this. Um, I looked everywhere, tried to find something in my stash at work, but I, I thought this would be a good one uh, for those of you who want to practice a number of different things. Um, and the lighting is pretty good and the detail is there. It's really sharp uh, if you wanted to try something extremely realistic. Um, the first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about glasses and hands. <clears throat> uh, Ted Nettle um, is, is an artist I studied quite a bit and uh, really tried to uh, mimic or follow his steps. And here's a painting he did, um, this uh, lady. But look at the glasses. What I want to show you is the uh, close-up 
if you look at um, his glasses uh, that he painted on this lady, he did not paint all of the rims. Like here, he just left it. It's a technique he uses quite a bit. Um, you don't have to paint the entire, look at here, the pieces he missed in the frame. <coughs> Excuse me. And what he did is he just basically broke down the shapes he saw. So the top part had a different value. This side here had a different value. This had a different value in each of those. And then the reflection, you see right here at the top of the other uh, uh, lens, that frame, there's a reflection he left. He put a little reflection there and a piece of reflection there and a reflection there. Um, it's not a uh, photograph type painting. Uh, it's very uh, expressionistic. So when you put it all together, look how that beautifully fits the overall painting. So the next uh, one I want to show you is this guy here who has both uh, hands and glasses. I really like this uh, painting he did for a lot of reasons. Um, probably the most is because of the color and his use of shadows. And um, Jennifer, he did use, and I'll show you, he did use um, the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to soften one of the colors that he applied. So I'll show you what I mean here. So look at these. Um, first off, let's talk about using purples. He had the flesh tones in place, all the flesh tones. He added this layer right here that was <laughs> not just violet, but kind of a combination of this color plus a little violet. He laid this layer in place. It was just enough color to darken. And he layered all of these layers, which have cold pigments in them. He laid those in place here on top of and a mixture to and see what he got. There's even greens he used. Um, it wasn't dark, it was subtle. I think the, the biggest thing is uh, being subtle. And the other technique I learned in his workshop is how he did the shadow of the hat. The shadow of the hat is actually a violet purplish glaze. He mixes up a little violet and blue I mean, it is just so light. And then he paints that over this area here. He painted that because before he painted it, it looked like this. So he right down here, these values here were up here. So then he paints over those light values with a layer of a cold color. And it's very light. You know, the mix has a lot of water in it. So he'll put a layer on and what he showed me and emphasized that when it dries, it often is just enough to do that. And if it's not, you can add one more layer. But he says more times out of not, the first blaze of this cold color over the flesh is enough to create that shade. And I really valued that. Now we look at the glasses, who, which look very complicated, but what he did, he just takes the glasses and says, oh, glasses are made up a bunch of shapes. And now I don't particularly paint my glasses this way, but they probably closer, but he just takes each of the shapes, breaks down those shadows, whatever it is he sees and paints them. And then look at the hands. Um, the hands are very uh, similar to the face. It didn't change anything he did, they did in the face. But this purplish area is a glaze he painted down on top of the values that were already there. This is a glaze or a wash 
over top of this. It would look like this before he put this in place. It looked like this. And then he lays this nice light glaze over top of it for that shadow. Same thing over here in this shadow and these shadows. I thought that was pretty cool. What do you think? Uh, I think it's a very distinctive uh, style. I, I feel like I'm still focused on being very concerned that something is um, highly representative. Yeah, yeah. Of, I'm right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Kind of uh, what you think is it is, uh, Rob, I think that's a good point. Are you done? Oh, yes. Um, I think it's a good point in that. Um, I would pay more attention to the technique more than just uh, the style he uses. And uh, we'll talk about that. I've, I've showed it before, but um, I think it's worth talking about. Again, this is his style. You can, even though I, I, I went to four workshops and probably um, his workshops and, and all along spent a lot of time with him there because um, they were like overnight uh, you know, spent days and then you, you sat and talked with them in the evenings and etc. cetera. Um, this one's a nice one of hands. So let's go uh, to something that's more realistic. And uh, uh, here's a use of glasses. And here is a detail uh, around glass, I thought, I got. A, I thought this portrait is interested in why I picked it. I believe it is oil, but it makes the point of picking up the key uh, data points for your viewer's eye that you want to make. Here, he really picked up. Let's see if I can hone in on that. No, I guess not. Uh, everyone is there. Okay, hold on. There we go. Ah, see the, um, he made sure that he put those highlights in there. Uh, they were important to continue to establish the light source and the depth. So let me back out of here if I can. And then, uh, Look at this gel. Oh, here we go. Now the hands on this guy. Uh, this one I want to show you because of the use of color uh, and yellow. Um, I've, I've done that in quite a few paintings of using yellow. So the risk is you got a yellow person but here, because of the balance, this dark, this area right here, this black is really a dark, dark, dark red. I hope it shows up right here. Very dark red. Over here, um, which is the back, um, is more of a black, but there's a little bit of violet and et cetera. So anyway, let me go on. So one more, uh, this one. is a illustration, uh, but what I was looking for is the use in your eyeglasses of showing not only reflection in the eyeballs themselves or eyes, but the reflection in the glasses that give the glasses a um, three-dimensional look. This one, you're really wanting people to pay attention to the glasses. This reminds me more of a eyeglass commercial. So the option is you, if you want to emphasize these glasses, then you pay more attention to the data points that would make the viewer see that. In this case, uh, the reflection. So uh, that's uh, uh, a little kind of prep for what we're doing here. Uh, okay. uh, where I am, I'd be that last one you showed, the lady with the the glasses, uh, yeah. 
when I saw her hands, uh, to me, th those are the hands I want to do at this time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, those other hands uh, <laughs> may be somewhere in the future at first. Uh, uh, oh, no, you have to do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding. Uh, no, I think you're right. I, uh, I want you... The idea um, for why I expose all of you is that uh, it's more about less style, more technique, and uh, uh, learning of as much technique as possible. Uh, I don't want to confuse you. So, do any of you uh, are any of you planning to uh, pay along with me or follow along with me on this one? Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. All right, so the, uh, the question comes up where to start. Um, first of all, let me ask you a question. Would you rather uh, me uh, spend just a few minutes talking about wrinkles or jump into this one? Your yeah, please, please do talk about wrinkles. <laughs> yes, wrinkles. <laughs> I'm wondering if any of us are getting wrinkles. That's the reason. Well, aren't we born with a lot of wrinkles? No, when we're babies, it's, it's perfect. Uh, you're, yeah, good point. You're right. All right, there's my paper. And yes, we're born with lots of wrinkles. So the three wrinkles and closes, closes. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's, let's take a look at just a couple of the wrinkles. Uh, well, you know, let's just go ahead and use, do the wrinkles on her. What a concept here. All right. Uh, but to show the example, I'll do it on a practice piece of paper. So let me turn my palette on for your view. And since I already have a bunch of uh, the paints already mixed, uh, which these are uh, uh, what you see on the, the palette uh, on the uh, red side or this uh, warmer side. Uh, this is the uh, magenta color. Uh, and then here you can see it's pink. That would be the rose opera. Uh, I put water in there so it's real light. On this side, it's just a, a, a mix. Let me get my paper towel. <laughs> So let's try the technique of what I mentioned to you. Let me, uh, let me see if I can. There we go, that's better. So I'll take, um, I'm gonna take a little of that magenta. Uh, I'm gonna add a little uh, Indian yellow, just to get me. So um, what I'll do is let's say the wrinkle goes across. So let me sketch that wrinkle. And let's let's put your, a few... your palettes in the way. Sorry, thank oh, you. I'm glad you said that. How about now? There we go. Okay, that's good. I keep forgetting to look up the monitor. Man. Okay, so let's say that's the wrinkle. And uh, the first thing is to ask yourself where the light is coming from. So let's say the light is coming this direction. So, um, if that's true, it's going to be darker on the bottom of the wrinkle. So, here is the top of the wrinkle. So, the bottom of this wrinkle is this side, right? When you say that's the, the bottom of the wrinkle, it's rounded. And if I soften 
that side, you get something like that, right? And uh, I'll do that with each of them. This, this side here is the dark side. And you can play along at home. Okay, see, um, it's almost forming now. And if I want, I can add just a touch of that yellow in here to blend it out a little bit. And then as it comes down this direction, here it's gonna be lighter. It's gonna be lighter. So look what I do here. I lighten it there. And I'm exaggerating the wrinkle quite a bit. So that's the first layer. So the light is coming here. So the light is going to hit the top of this wrinkle. It's going to be lighter up here because the light's hitting it. And the same thing here, light hits it here, it hits it here. So the top of that wrinkle is lighter. So um, if I want to uh, exaggerate the wrinkle, which I enjoy doing, See if it's dry. Yeah, that's dry enough. Uh, I can darken that even more and make it a very strong line. And then don't pull that line out too far. I just pulled out a little bit. See? Just pull that line out a little bit. Yeah, I'll exaggerate the wrinkle. That's an exaggerated wrinkle and I love it. Make sense? Yes. I'll show you the second technique in just a second. Okay, so did anybody uh, want to show what they tried and let me ridicule and encourage you? Okay, if not, that's fine. Always have that option for me to give you my extreme valuable input. We're watching and learning. Oh, okay. So learn with me, okay? So here, I'm not gonna draw one. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be this one, okay? So let me uh, show you how that works. That, so the, the wrinkle's coming across in here like that. So I painted this first wrinkle. No, no line. And I, same technique, I softened it, drawing the rest of the, painting the rest of the shape there. Okay, so you gotta wait just a second and let that dry. So let me paint a couple of them. I'll paint one um, this direction. Okay, the key is uh, being able to produce that soft line. I think. It's dry, not yet. Here, let me do. Okay. Sure about mine. Not quite dry. Let me let me go back up here and um, put another layer on this one, so you can really see it uh, in a little, maybe a little darker. This is kind of cool when you now are ready for this. 
show you what happens. Cool, huh? Now that's, of course, enlarged, <laughs> All right? But um, so it kind of depends on how the wrinkles go. So back down to the other one, uh, I want that to be the dark line right there. I don't need to, to paint that dark line. All I'm going to do is go with my next layer. And the line is already there because I overlapped it. See the line that was formed? I did not paint a line. I was just where the two uh, glazes overlap. And that's what this is. That overlapped, that one overlapped, and that one overlapped. And so that's another way of doing it. Uh, it is another way of, of painting lines uh, where you don't want to, you know, just to sit there and paint a line is anytime you're painting whatever colors you're using. I will let that dry. And then, uh, so anyway, those are wrinkles. Questions, input, input, more, any other examples? Uh, the, could that technique also be done for veins? Yes. So, uh, so if a uh, vein, which really is a thicker line, Although a wrinkle is sunken and a vein is uh, often... Uh, uh, no, you're a good point. The vein has something going uh, on. Uh, higher. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, for me, I would paint the vein. Where's the light source? And uh, usually they're a little purplish. I'll wait and put that in later because of the blood. Uh, so let's paint the vein. Not in vain, but the vein. There we go. So there's the vein. We also know that the vein is rounded. It sticks up off the skin, right? So let's see if, we, see if I can create that. So um, that vein, in this case, is going to be darker if the light's coming here, down on this side. So it's going to have a little more uh, darkness down here. Now somebody's going to ask, "What do you have? What, what do you? How do you paint a vein and a wrinkle together?" <laughs> I'm waiting for that one. So um, all I would do here is maybe lighten this up a little bit right there or when it comes back, it's dark in that. So um, generally they're soft. So I'd come back and make that very soft. And this is, is, Ron, every time we ask a question, you're you're like completely on top of it, giving examples, expl explaining it. Uh, can we ever ask a question to stump you, Ron? Uh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm not going to give you those topics. You're not going to you could tell us which one. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think maybe the vein with a wrinkle might do it. But anyway, uh, let's, let's say it has a, a slight uh, tinge of blood going in there. 
So I just add just a slight amount of a, a glaze on that that has a little bit of red or blue in it. And as that, now that dries, uh, the other thing I like about veins is on watercolor is the pencil lines really mess you up on a vein uh, because you really don't want that such a strong line now. But anyway, that would be kind of what a vein uh, would look like. Uh, I oversimplified it, but it's always, it, it's, it, it is a shape that's rounded. So you have to ask how you paint a shape that's rounded. Uh, I don't particularly like that vein. So in this case, I was stumped, I think. All right, now making lines, one layer over another makes a line. I'm gonna put another layer right across here. This will be a nice jagged line. I just now painted a line without painting a line. See that? Mm. Because right along here, that line represents two layers on top, one layer on top of each other. One layer here, one layer here, overlaps, forms a line. Cool, huh? Yeah. Probably are. I know you already knew that. So. Okay. Any other questions? I'm gonna work on my oh. veins, Rob. I got a question, Rob. Yeah. Uh, I like I like to use the pencil to to draw before I paint. Yeah. And I'm wondering, is there like a magic pencil that I can see it, but Nobody else can see where I've I've done the pencil. Would it be a flesh colored pencil? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've never I've never tried a flesh colored pencil. Um, I've used gray to lighten it, um, but you know you might want to give it a try. Oh, I I've did. Used, I've used the um, um, kind of a cad yellow watercolor pencil. Mm -hmm to do drawings and that works pretty well. I know when, um, I, know when I uh, print, this is a print. It's not, uh, I, I uh, uh, traced it and then I uh, scanned it and printed it. I printed this in black. I know I could print these lines in a flush color. Um, and I think I've done that before. Uh, so yeah, I could use a, a maybe a, a flush color, uh, especially if I use. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, maybe Helen, you have have your. Are you saying you've used watercolor pencils to do your? I yeah. have. Yes, I have. Yeah, you know, that way they would probably uh, dissolve into the paint. You still would leave some on the paper because you can't get rid of all of it. But you might want to try a watercolor pencil. I'm gonna, I'll do that. It's a good idea, Rob. Yeah, uh, today I used um, terracotta. And um, uh, there's still some areas where it's like, oh, there's your kind of red colored pencil showing up. Yeah, right. that one might be a little too dark. Yeah. But there are flesh tone watercolor pencils. Yeah. And that you know, you know, Rob, the, the pencils uh, are just made up of pigment, so you're just putting some pigment down on the paper. Huh. All right, good. That's really a good comment. Hmm. Okay. Any other uh, ideas? Oh. I was I was looking at you paint the wrinkle. It remind me of you um, how they say to um, um, paint branches of a, a a tree. Yes. You know, so it's remind me of that <clears throat> yeah well yeah the, the you know the, the uh, wrinkles do that um the capillaries or veins do that uh, so they kind of start and as you wrinkle uh, yeah that's that's really a, a, a good observation i guess good. if you can paint veins you should be able to paint trees pretty good mm -hmm. and can i see that technique that you did where you you made a line without making a line? Yeah. 
Okay, could you, could you demonstrate that again? Yeah. So, uh, it's here you can see. So let me uh, put a, a different color glaze this time. Oh man, what did I do that? Uh, so anyway, I'm laying uh, let's say it's not like any shape you want. I'll even leave that dry brush there to make another point. Okay, that has to dry. So just let's give it a second. I'm going to turn my fan on here. I usually leave it off. It makes a little bit of a hum. But I'll help it draw. So, yeah, it's drying. Uh, I can see shadow. All right. So, uh, Rob, what I'll do is, uh, so that would be called one wash or one glaze or one layer that I placed on here. So the, the next layer I place on here will come across here and overlap. Um, the thickness of the line will depend on how much I overlap it. So uh, let's see if I'm able to do that. I'm going to use a totally different color. So it becomes pretty evident. I'm going to use a, a green. It's still wet. <clears throat> Well, let me let me overlap this line right here. This dry. So I'm going to go across here and overlap that line right there. Uh, can you see the line that was formed here? A little reflection. There we go. So look, it's a it's not a straight line because the other one wasn't, but this is a straight line. So it forms a line here. Yeah, and the, and the part where you overlap it uh, from here, it makes it look as though there's some depth. Yes. Uh -huh. There's a difference in depth of the two colors. Yeah. And you could even soften uh, some of that line if you want to make it less, less pronounced if you want. Mm -hmm. So back up here, uh, let's use blue up here. So I go across here. If I want it to be extremely straight, uh, just overlap it a little bit, or I can overlap it a lot. And as I go down with this next wash, and look what happens when I go over the area that has a dry brush edge. See that line? Now, I can make that line anything I want. I can soften it, right? But see how it's formed those lines. Yeah, the, uh, this technique should help a lot because um, I'm I'm still really cautious to not overlap. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think I want to overlap plus soften to, th yeah. to think about that. Good. All right. So that's that. Any other questions? Anything else you want me to show me before I do my thing? I got a bottle of water. <clears throat> Do you, um, when you do your undercolor, do you wait till that completely dry or do you also, while it's still wet, um, add in your additional colors? Yeah, good, uh, good question. 
Uh, it depends on the uh, technique I want to use. If I want it to be a sharp edge and not let it run into the other, uh, I make sure it's, it's dry. And if I want it, to, um, so uh, that version you're mentioning would be, uh, let's, let's put a, a wet one here. So that's wet. By the way, our uh, son's pup dog just had puppies, bearded collie. My wife is excited she's no longer COVID bound. So um, anyway, if I just put the line, what happens here depends on where I let the water, where the water is flowing. At the bottom, it won't move up too much. So I put that color right along here. If I put it at the top and set an angle, still wet, um, it's going to run down more. And then I have an incision here, whether uh, that's a little bit drier, I can soften that up a little bit. So that would be an example of a, a, a wet on wet, but it wouldn't produce a line. Mm -hmm. Very so good, I, thank you. I think I can question. You know, I can't answer the questions the way I hear them. Sometimes the way I want to hear them, but you know, that's another topic. Okay. All right, now let's get on. You want to be ready for this lady? Uh, let's give her a name. Uh, let's call her Beth. I, I think she looks so much like Kim Minichello. Okay. Really? Okay. Yes, I do. Huh. Okay. I don't want to call her Kim, though. Yeah, I understand. But, um, but I thought of Kim the entire yeah, time. Yeah, you're I was right. Drawing it. Uh, the smile. Uh huh. And the hand. She did. Yeah. I saw pictures of her with her hand up like that. You know, maybe that's the way I picked it. Hold on just a second. My, I'll show you something. Never mind. Um, I did several portraits of Kim. Uh, one I showed, but a couple of them I didn't. But anyway, as we digress, uh, Banana, what are you doing? Looks like you're painting the. Looks like you're painting yourself. Okay. All right. Here's a way to start. Um, we can start with, uh, generally, let me tell you why I start. With glasses, it's pretty cellular. And uh, because of the size of this, it'll be a small brush. So let me clean out a little bit of the uh, palette. So in this case, we're not going to, uh, just as for funsies, we're not going to do an underlay over the whole thing uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it makes it so it's a lot faster that we can work. But the other is uh, I want to concentrate on this, the shapes. And um, so the first thing we would do is we'd be doing the eyes. So we've got an hour, but I'm going to go straight to the eyeglasses. So first thing, let's read the values in the glasses. And what we have side is how much 
detail that we're planning on using that we see in those glasses. <coughs> so I've mixed up, um, I see glasses that have uh, on, on this side, if we want to look at some colors that, so the colors of the glasses, and we want to be very observant every time we do a painting, because it gives us options how to approach that. Hip here, I see a reddish brown. I don't know if your photo shows that. Right in here, um, the light is coming through her glasses. And actually, the glasses have a slight reddish brown to them. And then they are multicolored. It looks like it's mixed with, uh, with uh, black onyx. Um, the shape of the glasses are important. So I, have, I want to ask myself, what data is important to pass on to the viewer about these glasses? And there, uh, there are several that come to mind. One is, um, if I could capture that slight um, bevel in the glass itself, seems like that light right here that hits from this source is important. And it looks like it hits a little bit over on this side. There's no, hardly any uh, reflection of light over here from this, this source because it's in the shadow. This one is in the sun. So I wanna definitely emphasize the fact that this side of the lens is in the sunlight. So that reflection is good, maybe suggesting that. There's only uh, some minor highlights. And then, then over here, the other piece that's important, if I think it is, is it has a metal uh, edge to it. Uh, a lot of painters would leave that off uh, because it would be distracting. It doesn't say anything. Uh, see that line right there? You might think, would you have, would you have put that shape in? just because it's in the photograph. But because the way that we're planning, we're thinking really about what is it we want to say, communicate. I don't think that shape is very helpful. Then again, here I am wrestling. I wonder if that points some, helps point something. Well, the line's there anyway. So there's a detail. I'm not really sure it's very helpful. So, um, I'm going to start with one value, um, and I'm going to add just a little bit of magenta. I don't know if you, you see that color. Oh, I think you see it now. So that uh, red sienna and ultramarine blue, I add a little magenta to it. It gives it a slight brownish color. So I'm going to kind of go with that. And I'm going to just paint, and I'm not using Ted Nettles technique here. I'm just going to paint that and alternate that just a little bit with a little bit of blue as I come over. So it went from that color and I'm going over to that adding blue, ultramarine blue to it. So you can see that shift I'll uh, see if I can even zoom in a little closer for you. Yeah, I think that's better, don't you? <clears throat> so you see that shift? It's, uh, it's going from this mix I had here. And it goes to there. And as I'm as I moved off the left, I want that to be moving into a darker blue. So I'm just reading what I see. So I'm going to take that, uh, the one that has the ultramarine blue color in it, which makes it much darker. So that's the way it kind of looks to me. I left uh, ever so slightly, I don't know if you see it, a small line right here. 
a white line is going to, I'm going to leave that. Um, this is the point uh, in the planning uh, where you might have said, I am going to use a masket and put a small line in there. If you can, not a lot of people can mask a very thin line. Um, as I go across and look at the, um, the, uh, the frame, that reddish brown shifts to a grayish blue with dark under it. I think that would be a nice uh, place to go on that. So are you all painting? You want to, you uh, caught up? You want to, ready for me to continue? Okay, I'm going to continue. <laughs> uh, so I've got a, a, a number one brush. And uh, the watercolor purist would, would die if they saw me probably. Um, so I'm going along here. I'm going to put a, a blue line right along here. It's very blue. It's ultimately blue, is the color I'm using. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of that uh, gray down uh, color I had here, uh, which is uh, it's got a little reddish to it. So at the bottom, it's kind of a blue color. As I go over, I'm going to make it more black. Uh, the reason it's getting outside. Over here, it's beginning to be the part that's not in the sun. So it's a, a black, which is, uh, my black is ultramarine blue. I am going to leave a little line for a highlight there. Um, I'll tell you right now, the hardest part of painting glasses is being able to paint a line. And my guess that will be where you'll struggle. Okay, I'm gonna leave that line there. See that white line? Go leave that. Go to come down. And I'm gonna leave another one, which will be not white, but it'll be a dark gray. I'm going to paint the bottom part of this. Okie dokie, how you doing? Now, when have you ever, ever had more fun than this? I know, Patty, this is the ultimate for you. All right, I'm going to use my um, Cerulean Blue. Or Windsor blue. I think it's Windsor blue. I'm going to put a little of that blue right here to suggest, and I'm going to lighten it a little bit. See that? And I'm going to run that across the top too to suggest it's reflecting the light that's coming in in front of me. In front of you. Right now, I'm worried about the value. So that's kind of how it's look shaping up to be. I like it. Um, it's got some uh, movement and texture to it. And now this, see the white line I left here? I'm gonna go ahead and just paint it blue. Just a little, put a layer of blue over it. I don't want it to be that dark. See, I just put blue over that. So how are you doing? Pretty good?
course, I picked a pair of thin glass uh, frame glasses, didn't I? Could have picked a thick one, but. All right, the other thing I'm going to try to do is leave a slight white line. Now, uh, for those of you who screw up the white line, you can come back in with a white watercolor pencil after it dries and put that line in or a blue watercolor pencil because uh, that, that is, they are opaque. Um, or I can put some white watercolor gouache. So uh, I'm going back up and just touch up a couple things here that I want to touch up. Just being careful. I do want that to look three-dimensional. And that's getting a whole lot closer to what I had in mind. I'm going to continue over here with um, putting in uh, a darker area right here, ever so subtle, giving it a three-dimensional. I'm going to see if I can leave that line. Uh, this really is a, a test on painting small. I've never painted miniatures. Maybe I should try that. So I'm just being careful. I find to just keep the brush flowing. Move the there. I moved it through. It went something like that. So on the bottom, I did not want to put any detail uh, or any suggestion. The top gives us all the information we really want about how that light is coming through and that slight reflection in there. Uh, the bottom, what I will do is when I go to do the flesh, I'm going to leave uh, just a little white line here. A little white line there. Uh, Ryan, how did you decide to do the glasses first? Can, and when is it that you could do the glasses last? Uh, it would be the same. If you did the glasses laugh, last, uh, I would suggest that you mask all of it and paint oh. the inside first, unless you're really good about protecting the white. It's very hard to do that. You so you what said, you could have done is mask. The, these particular acids would have been easy just to put a masking fluid around it and paint that, and then paint the eyes. Okay. I think I prefer starting with the glasses then. Yeah. It's, um, you, can, you can start anywhere. Um, so if I were wanting now to come in, I'll just pick one light. I find when I start with dark, I have a tendency to smear the dark later on. Yeah, uh, there, yeah, I think you can um, give you an idea of, you can still, uh, it just depends on, uh, a lot of it has to do with your ability to control that. So if I, So if I try to control that a little bit, I can, I can keep from getting in. I wonder how those dog hairs get in there. If you learn nothing from it, you'll learn that I hate no, I don't like dog hair. So I just threw a little uh, touch of color in there. Um, and you, just to show you, I can come back in. Um, you know, I'll just put a touch of color there. Uh, 
here, I'm gonna lay that line. It'll be darker. So uh, yeah, you can um, you can paint inside that. Uh, I think you have to be kind of careful. Uh, Any other uh, good comments, questions? Uh, I'm wondering when you showed us glasses in the beginning of today, and they were uh, well uh, quite different than these glasses. I'm wondering what they would look like again. How how some. Uh, I don't, I don't understand your question. Let's... Okay, in the beginning, you showed us some portraits and they had glasses. Oh, yeah. And they were... Much different? Yeah, they, they leaned uh, very abstract. Oh, and that Maya of impact impacted... Well, the reason I showed it to you, um, to me, using these multiple colors in here, uh, in this shape, was the point. If I didn't make that, but let me make it now. These colors are very similar to what uh, Ted was using. Instead of it just being a solid line, uh, these are different colors, uh, the blue, the blues, the light blues. Um, so that's, that's the point I was uh, making. Okay. Not obviously not all that good, but. But I think you are correct, though. I, and I don't like saying that. So the point is, um, this lens up here had a lot of different colors in it. I could have made that just a solid black line across there. And maybe gotten away with it. I don't know. It feels like that's not really. I'm taking advantage of the of using watercolors, like I could. It's just a something offered me in this uh, media that I want to uh, take advantage of. So we back up. See kind of how it's coming a little, starting to be like uh, something like a painting. Does anybody want to share hers? Show and tell time. Hey. Oh, I think I'm going to like this. Oh, that, that, now I'm ready for you, Rob. I'm ready for you, Rob. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, that's actually quite good. Very good. And here's why. Uh, very. Um, the variation of values, you just didn't put a black line across there. I think you might have done that in your past. But today, look how you paid attention to uh, that variation. It's subtle, but man, it makes a big difference in the believability of those glasses. So, okay. nice. thanks.
Now, now I have that big decision about what to do with the temple, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there are many more decisions coming up. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, look at that. Hold that up a little closer. Yeah, you did take advantage of, uh, I like the way the, the colors, Jennifer, hold that closer to the camera just a little bit. Yeah, see, uh, look at the colors you used in the glasses, the variance of values. Uh, you just didn't make a black solid line across there. Nicely done. I couldn't get my black dark enough. Well, that's good now, isn't it? Teach, teach yourself how to keep your uh, black from getting too dark. <laughs> Nice. Wow. Okay, here comes Helen's. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I love the way you see the blue in there. So subtle, but what a difference that makes. That had been just a black solid across there. Um, yeah, that's a, uh, and I like that touch of red in there. I can see it. Um, and the, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's quite nice, Helen. Good job. I like this technique. Anyone else want to be um, encouraged? Oh, there we go. I was hoping Patty would come up. Patty, that's nice. Let's see. Um, Look what you did at the top part. You uh, used uh, varying values and colors. Um, yeah, of course the drawing we will talk about, but uh, the execution is, is great. All you have to do, and what will be tough for you, is uh, uh, controlling a line. I'm gonna show you a, a couple of techniques uh, for if you have trouble painting a, a line, I'll show you, you know, keeping a, the edge straight. So uh, a lot of people have trouble uh, controlling their hand. Um, so there are a lot of tools. One is, uh, this is a sign maker's tool. And right now I forgot the name of it. I'll think of it. See if it's sitting on there. Right now. Of course not. It's a, uh, it's by Excel. Anyway, it's a long stick with a rubber tip on it. So uh, the way you can do that is you can set that down on your paper and you can adjust how far and you can move. And so let, don't let me ruin that. You set it down and it depends on where you position it. Right now it's just messing up my microphone. But um, I can set that, and if I slide it this way, I'm going to get a mark like that. That's that's one technique, and it helps. Otherwise, I would, I probably, if I can do it this way, I will, which I can, but a lot of people can't. And it also holds it in place if you're doing the glasses. You just rest your hand on there. I can kind of cup it like that. And it really helps me hold my hand in place. Anybody know the name of that? I don't know, but it looks like it was invented in the uh, Middle Ages. It probably was. Back, yeah. it, it's used for the uh, sign makers who hand painted signs. But I, I saw someone using this on a uh, demo and uh, I've used it a few times. Um, 
uh, particularly when I can't get to something like I want, I can, I can sit right over top of it. And I do like the way I can make a swivel line, a bunch of those like that. And they very consistent. So Mar Marilyn would know what it's called. Her dad was a sign maker. Oh, good. Okay. I'll find out. Okay, good. But uh, uh, that's, I got it because the older I get, I think the more I'm kind of thinking I might, I don't know, just thinking, you know. So back to the, uh, but anyway, that's one technique. Uh, I think the other is probably practice. Um, one of the things, uh, Patty, that you'll need to do is practice uh, for you. You have to find what works for you. Some people really can control it better. One is where you hold the brush. So if I hold it here, it's very hard to make a line. I can. Uh, closer you have to the brush, the more control you have. Nice straight line. That's one. The other is find out whether which way you paint better by pulling it this way, or do you, do you find that if you move the paper uh, a, a, a line like that, you can scroll because you can always move this paper to assist in what you seem to be able to do. So figure out where your hand is that gives you the most control. I know for me, if I'm painting up in this left-hand corner, I'll show you, it's like this, I'm trying to get at it and see it, I, I have trouble. But I can turn that around, the paper, and move it so my hand can access it better. So don't be afraid to move your paper like when you're doing those glasses. I have many times, especially starting, um, will paint these glasses. And, uh, and I'll, I'll move it so I can be at the advantage that I normally have. I'm really good about painting this stroke right here. I can control that. So I'll put the paper in place so I can use the stroke I'm most likely to control. Thank you. Yeah. No extra charge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other, um, anybody else want to show? Okay, now a couple of things I want to say is the time is approaching. That's quite a bit. I want to say uh, we will obviously not get the hands, and obviously will not show the video. That will be for a future uh, class, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. What I do want to mention to you is um, it uh, particularly applies to Vanetta and Patty. Um, and well, I guess any of us. When you're planning a uh, portrait, and you have to ask yourself, I know this is redundant, ask yourself, what is it you're expecting it to look like when you're done? Now, Patty, in the case of the example you showed this morning, I think what you should or could expect is that painting to be more impressionistic, not particularly sound on proportions or the exact location of all the uh, facial features. Rather, you're going to paint those to express something inside you. That's all that doesn't matter. And that painting is very much like that because it's not accurate. Now, if you are after uh, an end product, a painting that is extremely close to the subject, 
then you have to be an excellent drawing drawer. And I mean, really good. And you'll need to take drawing classes. Uh, and drawing classes particularly on how to draw uh, a person. I've taken quite a few of those classes and I can do, a, I think a pretty decent job. Um, and the reason I don't is because it freaking takes too long and I don't like, I don't enjoy that part, I wanna paint. So that leads us to the next question is how to get the image on a paper. I highly recommend the projector. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are probably, I would say 90% of portrait artists use a projector. Um, somewhere along the line, we were taught that that's cheating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess if you can't get over that, then you, know, you stick with that. Um, or, uh, there are other, basically they're all the same. They're using some sort of a projection of the image itself. Uh, so if you really have to decide whether you're going to use a projector or not, and if you're not, and you still want the outcome, you've got to take um, and really develop your drawing skills. So um, that's my input to you. And uh, uh, I, I kind of like the expression painting a lot and I encourage those who like it to do it. I don't personally uh, like it for myself, but I love it when I see it. That's why I just go Google's Patty when I saw your painting. But let me get back to my, yeah, that way you can see my expressions. Ron, question. Yeah. Um, do you know anything about that Lucy tool? I've heard about it. <laughs> And I, uh, wait, this, what tool do you use, Rob? Is it Lucy? Camera Lucy? Lucida. It's yeah. an app. Right. And they have instructional videos on the app. It costs about maybe $5. Well, they have the, it's like an overhead projector. Well, I have a system. I don't want to take time away from the class. No, I it's think called uh, Osmo. It's a kid's uh, computer system. And yeah. you put your iPad on here on the stand without the case on it. And then you put this part, that's the um, mirror. So then the picture from your iPad projects down onto your paper. And then you can do different transparencies so you can see your pencil when you draw. And that one's called what? It's Osmo. called an Osmo. And Osmo? if you go, if you if you buy the Camera Lucida app, there's a tutorial on how to use the Osmo. So you might want to try that before you. Help. I, have, I have a projector. I just find that too cumbersome. Oh. Yeah. Um, that's a good comment. So, uh, tell us again how that's spelled. L. Uh, camera L U C I N D R A, I believe. Wait, L U C I N D. L U C I D A. C D A. L U C I A. D A. No, yeah, D A. D A. Okay. How much does it cost? How much does the little attachment cost? It might, I don't know, it might have been $100, but might be less. Can I borrow yours? Sure. Uh, and what's the uh, What's the size? Are there any limitations on the size of the paper? You can, it's kind of cool because you can enlarge the picture as much as you want. I mean, my iPad is only so big. Okay. It works on only an iPad or works on an iPhone too? Well, if 
you don't need the Osmo. You can, they have a system that they show in the tutorial where they put it on top of a blender case and. Uh, on a blender? Um, yeah. You just rest your iPad on top of a support. Okay, okay. gotcha. All right. I think that was helpful. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes. Ron, oh. that one. Ron. Yes. Okay. Uh, so in doing the soft portrait, my eyes ended up too small. Is it better to take an approach of making eyes uh, larger and oh. then making them smaller or to start small, making them bigger? Oh, hmm. well, depends on what you're what are you wanting the final outcome to be? You want uh, it to be uh, photo-esque? I, I want the eyes to be representative and proportional okay. to what the human is. <laughs> yeah. Well, then uh, using projector and tracing will give you 90% of that correct. Oh, that Jennifer does that. I'm the free hand. I know. I know. So uh, what you'll have to do is... Um, uh, I don't think you try to do it small or large. You try to do it as close to what you uh, see as possible. Um, I could, uh, I don't know, it depends on what you need. I could, I could um, do a couple classes on basic drawing of the face um, if that would be something of help uh, to all of you. Oh, it's, it's just that uh, most of the time they're reasonable. Uh, this time they were just too small, so. Yeah, well, uh, let, let me just give you, for instance, for example, of proportions, and you can Google all of this too, um, is on the face is knowing the proportions and, you know, the eyes go at the middle, halfway down between there, is the uh, bottom of the nose. Halfway between there is the eyes. So down the middle, um, the eye, the eyes are one eye distant from each other. One eye goes right in the middle of it in most cases. So if you can put an, uh, three eyes together to raise the middle one, you'll be pretty close. Anyway, that's, that's the quick one. Quick answer. Okay. Ron, <laughs> if you'll spot, Ron, if you'll spotlight me, I've got a, a picture I can um, fax to, or email to everybody okay. or email to you and you can mail it. Oh, I just a second. I'm caught up here. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, there it, it is. It's got the dimensions on it. Yeah. Yeah, you could, there's a lot of reference uh, uh, documents available and tutorials on it. Um, uh, you might just want to hone in on the uh, proportions of uh, the eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, to your point, Helen, uh, the size of the eyes uh, are a subset of usually what uh, those studies or those things cover. Um, the Osmo costs $41, the stand and the mirror on Amazon. Nice, 41 bucks. Yep. Does that include my commission? My commission. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, I've got a few things we need to get out of the way before. Uh, let me unhighlight some stuff here. Uh, All right, so uh, a couple things. Uh, one, I uh, hope that you'll continue on uh, painting this subject. Um, I always, I kind of prefer not having enough time versus having too much time. This is definitely a case. I wish I had another hour or two with you. Um, also, uh, the class, uh, I will be starting another Zoom class in two weeks, two weeks from today. Uh, I'll send you all emails um, 
And if you know of anybody interested, what I do need is some input on what the content uh, you think would be most relevant. But well, Brian, if you start two weeks from today, that means you only get one week off. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, start one week, two, day, two weeks from today. And you only get one day off. Well, yeah, that gives me one week off. Yeah. Okay. Two weeks is two weeks. Yeah. Get it. Definitely two weeks off. Two weeks of not having to think about me. That's too long. Well, we'd miss you, Ron. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to know how to make the re the glass part of the glasses because on this lady, you can kind of see that there's some very light reflection in there. Yeah, that's good. Let me make a note. Okay, we will continue glasses and reflection in the next session class, okay? Anybody else have some input? I'm gonna just a little bit more on color mixing. I'm sorry, uh, what was that, Vanetta? Color mixing. Okay, color. Like making the color black and different things. Like you uh, was you used the um, ultramarine blue. It seemed like for the black, and you can also mm -hmm. use the burnt umber or different things. So just that kind of stuff. Okay. Yes, we'll do. Can we do hand? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can we do hand, Ron? Okay, Patty. What was that? Hands. Hands. Skin. Oh yeah, we didn't go to hands yet. Got to hand that to you for sure. Okay, Rob? Uh, I, I would like to go further further down to maybe the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, more body. And then we could learn how to do fabric with folds oh, and zippers and yeah. seams and buttons. <laughs> Those are fun, by the way. Mud Ron, Ron. Yeah. Oh, Ron, also the ear, I seem like I have trouble either the, I see the different shapes in the ear, but it doesn't, it doesn't look right. It never turns out the way I really want the ears. Yeah, I, I definitely can relate to you on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the other thing is the uh, uh, after we finish something to a certain point, how to look at it and figure out, okay, what would be the next steps in refinement? Okay, um, say that again. I cut part of it. Oh, the, the um, okay, so for instance, um, we have our wash all over and our first layers and then yeah. to critique it and say okay the next step for this painting would be to do you know to do what and then what might be the third round okay because so it's really I, have, I have a lot of portraits here and and they need step they need step two and three pretty badly but you want to finish probably Always focused on, I think that's probably a good input overall is whatever we work on. Let's really be clear on kind of what the next steps are. Uh, how would you how would you move through to the next step? Okay, that's good. Uh, the is that other what thing? you're saying? Is that capture it, up? Yes. And I was thinking, I like the way that you critique. I mean, like you said, um, because I think that when you're doing it out of love and being constructive, I think is very good because we all are trying to grow. 
Yeah, uh, I appreciate you saying that. Um, I kind of come about it from my own experience. And um, I, I, I know classes and workshops I've liked and those I have not liked. Uh, uh, ones I like are ones that, you know, give you some ideas, not always as much as critique, but ideas on the areas that uh, anyone can say, oh, that, that nose was poorly painted. Uh, it's too dark. Well, I need a little more information. But, the, the what, what do you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, yeah, I think we're, that's probably why all of us hang out on here right now is some similarities that way. Anyone else? Input. Ron, I'm probably going to have to miss the next session because I've got a six-week pastel class that I'm developing for the Guild. Oh, really? So, Tell me uh -huh. more. Well, it's going to be a, a six-week 101 on pastels. Well, if any of you are in that neighborhood, uh, you might want to take advantage of that. Sounds like who's teaching it? You're teaching it? I'm, I'm coordinating it and doing most, I'm doing the art instruction and I've got guest artists coming in to do demonstrations. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah, me, I think Patty's coming. Yeah, let me give you a hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I've been working on my syllabus, putting everything together. And so it's going to be nuts and bolts. And uh, that's fantastic. I, I like that. Now, what what would be the subject matter on the pastels? Oh, I'm starting from everything. But, you know, what are pastels? What do they look like? Um, and different ways of like alcohol or mixing and all that stuff. No, no, I'm not oh. doing that. It's just it's strictly 101. I'm doing an in introduction to pastels. I'm I'm talking extensively about the color wheel, color temperatures, color exercises. Um, Hues, values, shapes, lines, composition, papers, tools, tips, drawing or painting shapes. And that's one of the things I've learned from you is to concentrate on shapes. Um, building blocks of the composition of the, the painting. Um, line strokes, side strokes, combining strokes, scrumbling, feathering, bending. This is all in one workshop? This is going to be six weeks. Okay, good. So you just, uh, you are very aggressive. <laughs> so, um, so well, good, good luck. That sounds like a heck of a lot of fun. It, I'm, I'm really enjoying putting together the presentation. Let's just see how the execution goes. Yeah, there's some similarities of uh, pastels and um, watercolor. In there. Oh, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and acrylics, uh, you know, all painting mediums. They have to have the same basis, yeah. the foundation. Building those uh, layers, nice. Okay, so we're gonna start a class in two weeks. Tell us real quick, uh, what's your biggest takeaway from this six weeks were each of you, I need to hear from all of you one at a time. What's the biggest takeaway? That way I'll know I'll repeat it next time I teach this class. Oh, I could try. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, it, it would be uh, the practice of de developing more confidence and technique where Instead of I'm hoping for my painting to produce something that I'm moving more towards, I can produce what I want. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, you're definitely much way down that path. I, I'm proud of you. Well, I've, I've taken copious notes. And so what I plan to do is, is go through the notes and review the videos again. And, you know, it just, it just emphasizes for me that it is a process and you have to learn the fundamentals of the process and then be able to execute them. Yeah. And, sure. and I think I've got the fundamentals down pretty well. It's the execution that <laughs> I have to work on and that has to be me. Yeah. Well, yeah. And well said. But I will have a fear of missing out. <laughs> Uh, Ron, don't you video? And I'll be back. Okay. Do you videotape our sessions? Do I do impressions? Do you, <laughs> do you videotape our sessions? Yes, I do. 
and they're available. Uh, um, do you now get the link? Oh, uh, yes. I get the link. Okay. Since yes. I'm here, I don't need to watch the. Yeah, there. Uh, of course, they're two hours. But uh, what's cool about it, you can uh, look at it. I didn't get last week's because, well, we won't go there. But uh, I've got today's. Okay, Pat. Right. I want to thank you because I'm seeing the shapes and understanding so much better. This class, this one was fabulous. This one was even better. I've, I've learned a lot. So thank you. It's been excellent. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm getting better at looking at shapes after this class and um, gradations. <laughs> well, I think um, that comment um, is big. I think um, I think that's paramount in the learning and watercolor. So I say congratulations. It is. It's paramount. Anyone else? Yes. Um I enjoy the idea that we're a community. Um, I had gotten away from watercolor for a while and I wanted to get back with it. And in my mind, I think of, okay, I just want to have an individual, you know, tutoring. But I think I'm sort of liking the idea of having group type of activities like this because you grow from each other, the ideas that each other brings and, and everybody is so supportive. And so I like the idea that we all know we have to show up and commit. And when you give us these assignments, I was up like almost all night trying to do this uh, <laughs> um, painting and different things like this. So I think that, you know, we, I just, uh, I like your style and I, I'll be attending the next one if, if okay. everything goes well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I uh, was brand new and it helped me a whole lot with just the very first uh, blending of skin tones. I definitely will be continuing. I uh, would like to know the handout you sent me, all the little squares for the templates were, were blank. I don't know if there's another uh, way you could send it. No, but, it's a, uh, a problem with new security code uh, coding on Microsoft. I'll try to get that fixed. I feel like I've missed a lot that the other classes okay. have gotten. So I'm going to go back through all your videos and okay, see if I do a lot of catching up. Okay. Okay, so. A uh, whole lot of fun. Make sure all the you live in Florida go to the Florida Watercolor Convention. And um, I want to thank all of you. I really enjoyed it. And Helen, uh, we will miss you. I, well, I'll be back. It's just that I've got to take a break. Yeah. To do this. I, I'm just trying to imagine all the stuff you're going to miss. Okay. <laughs> well, send me an email. I may come in. <laughs> we, miss your, uh, we miss your input. All right. Uh, have a great day. And everybody, you know what you need to do next, don't you? Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. Helen, practice. Practice. If your class is full, Helen, could you send out information on that class? It's going to be live at the Guild. I see. Uh -huh. So if you're anywhere near Newport Ritchie, then... Uh, I've just never done that else. I'm interested in anything by Zoom. Well, we're we're installing a new AV system, and we're hoping that, to have it up and running. And if so, we may video it. But um, and then ho hopefully the next time we offer it, then well, you, we'll be able to do it via Zoom. Yeah, that would be interested in doing the recap. Yeah. Ron, can can I verify the dates though? Uh, with the starting. Time be uh, July 13th, Wednesday. Hold on, let me get my calendar. Okay, I'm ready. Let's have a conversation. Today is June 29th. And we would start on July 13th. Is that what you have? Uh, yes. Yep. At, uh, it would be for six weeks. Okay, and the hours? 
Um, I think 9.30 works. Does everybody still like 9.30 to 12, 11.30? Okay. 9.30 to 11.30, uh, it will be the uh, same Zoom connection. And uh, there will be a discount for all those who have already uh, per, you know, been through these classes. Okay. Can we, uh, when can we register? Uh, I'll probably have it up by tomorrow. Okay. All right. So we're going for six weeks, right? Yes. Okay. One, two. Tell all your friends and family, post it on Facebook. And, uh, okay. I show that we, we would be ending August 17th. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. I got it. Yep. So Ron, speaking of that, if you send me something, I'd be happy to put it on my Facebook page. I'll do it. Oh. Well, let me make a note. I'll do that. No, yeah, I'm you. happy to do that. Okay. I never, you know, that's what's powerful about this thing. Man. Facebook ad. All righty. Um, and, no, and I am following the confabs. There will be will not be one this coming week, but the following week. And Helen, there'll be one you definitely will enjoy. I've enjoyed all of them. I haven't missed any. Yeah. And don't uh, intend to. All right. You better not. Ron, you really have this technology down because uh, it's so much more improved. Um, we get nice close ups and uh, it's very smooth. I'm thinking every week is a little bit better. Every once in a while I have a setback, but uh, I'm getting better. Don't you think I'm getting better? Yes. Yes. Uh, Ron, <laughs> Ron, Ron, I have to do an all day, three day camp for um, with Marilyn with the kids. So I would miss the 13th. Would that be a problem? Uh, you know the answer to that. Or You'll send me a room. Of okay. course not. You'll, yeah. you'll watch the video. Okay. Thank you. And Ron, also, um, you know, I take classes from Suzanne Natsky as well, and she yeah. uses this tool. It's called um, Snip and Sketch. Yeah. Where people can hold up their artwork to show it, and she can snap a picture of it, and then she can pull that up, and she can mark on it where they need to do um, improvement. So I thought you might want to utilize that tool as well. That's good. Oh, that's good. Now what's it called? Scratch and sniff? It, snip, <laughs> it, snip, S-N-I-P and sketch. I got it. Snip and scratch. Awesome. Sketch. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of you. But you might want to check that out. I'm going to. And uh, thank all of you. And uh, uh, thank best you. all of you happy painting. Happy Thanks again. It was wonderful. Yeah.